Tales of the Road Warriors! Hi, this is Hal Aaron, your host of Tales of the Road Warriors, my podcast, and um, glad you're here. Today's a very special and very different episode. Uh, for one, I haven't put out an episode in about a month, so I'm just starting to get back into it. As you know, the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic and uh, this uh, self-imposed isolation and quarantine, whatever you want to call it, has been wreaking havoc on my psyche. And uh, I, sometimes I just get out of bed and I'm so unmotivated. I'm sure a lot of you are going through this. So I'm going to try to get Tales of the Road Warriors back on track. I'm in the midst of two interviews. I have to call two people back that we never even completed our, our, our uh, conversations. Toby Lightman, uh, Ezra Mohawk, my apologies if you're watching this. Uh, I'll be in touch shortly and hopefully we can uh, complete those episodes. But in the meantime, today, the reason today is different, uh, for one, my guest is not a musician. He's a truck driver, but still, he's a road warrior, right? Truck drivers are warriors of the road, just like taxi drivers, limo drivers, food truck drivers, musicians, anybody, uh, comedians, anybody who gets in a car or, or any kind of road vehicle and is out there making a living uh, out, out on the highway so in some way or another is a road warrior. So, uh, by default, Dave Canyon qualifies. Dave Canyon is the host of his own podcast called Dumbing It Down with Dave is the, uh, the fastest podcast on earth because he podcasts while he's driving to and from work in his Kia or he also has a caravan. So depending on what he's driving that uh, particular week, he's doing his podcast from that vehicle on his way to get in his truck and drive the highways. Now, the other thing that makes this different is I'm doing it on YouTube as well. So not only will you be able to hear this on any app where uh, podcasts are available, but you'll also be able to watch this on YouTube. I, I uh, did the conversation with um, Skype using Ecamm Live, which allowed us to split the screen. So you have uh, Dave on one side, me on the other, and like that. One thing before we get started, I just want to say uh, I have some swag. Uh, I have this uh, great, let me see, there we go, Tales of the Road Warriors coffee cup, coffee mug. And for those who you want to go for a drive, I have the I'm going for a drive uh, travel mug. And on the other side is the logo, the Tales of the Road Warriors logo. Uh, you can get these on the website and it'll help support the site. So uh, let your intention be known. Let, let, let your people know, I'm going for a drive, which is also the theme song to this, as well as Dave's uh, podcast, Dumbing It Down with Dave. So, um, all right, let's get into it. Let's get uh, Dave on the line and have some fun. Hi, this is Hal in Philly. You're listening to Tales of the Road Warriors, or... Or it could be, we could be doing a double podcast, like you could use this for Dumbing It Down with Dave. And I'm Dave's guest, Hal from Philly, the host of Tales of the Road Warriors. See there how you I go. did that? Now you could use it as an episode of your own. Why not? Why not? I will. I am. So, Thank you. So this is Hal in Philly. I'm talking to Dave Canyon. Great idea. Dumbing It Hi, Down everybody. with Dave, the original Dumb Dumb. No, I'm the Dumb Dumb. Fans well, of Dave, dumb -dumbs. Dumb -dumbs. Yeah. Dave it's is term, Dave. It's a term of endearment. I say it out of love. Right, but that would make me the dumb dumb because you're Dave. The fans of your show are called dumb dumbs, right? Dumb dumbs. Yeah, but I am a dumb dumb also, so okay. that's why. <laughs> and it's a term of endearment. Okay. Yeah. So here's the deal. Uh, yeah. I met Dave at uh, Podcast Movement 19, which was in uh, Orlando, Florida, in 2019, in yeah. August. That's back when we didn't have to wear masks, and thousands of us congregated at uh, the the Rosen, Orlando the Rosen, Rosen Shingle Hotel. <laughs> By the way, I, I just I'm sorry to interrupt. 
First of all, do you want to hit that blur button or you don't want to touch it? Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's hit the I'm blur like, button now. See, is that from, is that his underwear? <laughs> <laughs> is, is oh, I got a... towels. I got like I live in this room. Like, if I turn this around, you'd see my studio. I'm I'm in the yeah. corner of the room yeah. where the studio is. <laughs> is that a jar of Vaseline it's on the site? <laughs> uh, audio video video settings, and we went the blur. Ah, there you go. Now, okay, that didn't really help much though, did it? It just looks well, like a light show. Now it's a messy blur. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. There we go. You know, Listen, it's so funny. Yeah. Go ahead. You, you there's nowhere to go. It's COVID nineteen. All my yeah. dirty clothes are behind me. There's nothing I can do about it. Yeah. You know? It's so funny to hear you say PM nineteen or podcast movement nineteen. I'm like, that sounds like another virus. It's like, oh my god, we met at PM nineteen, <laughs> and then months later, COVID nineteen, and then you, uh, what is it? The the Rosen Shingle, the Rosen Shingle <laughs> Hotel. I'm like. That doesn't sound good either. <laughs> no, and I always questioned the name of that. Like, why would the Rosens, who own the hotel, yeah. name it after shingles? Like, I would be afraid to check into the hotel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like, I guess, you know, Rosen Pox was first. That was out. <laughs> Rosen Pox was taken. Yeah. They were called then, Rosen Shingle. Yeah, and years ago, when, it, when it the Rosen's father started, it was uh, Rosen Olio, you know. <laughs> right. Did you guys clean the sheets, by the way? Not since then, yeah. But anyway, that's where we met. Yeah, podcast movement, Orlando. There you go, bringing you back so, up to date. Right, and I had just begun the Tales of the Road Warrior podcast, and you were in like your second or third year of dumbing it down with Dave. Yeah, and uh, so t- talk a little bit about your podcast. Uh, it's it's not uh, you're not your average road warrior that I usually talk to. I usually no. talk to musicians. You're a different kind of road warrior. I'm also a different kind of musician. Yeah. <laughs> Lead cowbell player. Lead cowbell. Oh, I already took it out. I had it here for the longest time. I just got rid of it. It's in the garage. I I think I have my kazoo somewhere, too. I also play the kazoo. Um, uh, Whatchamacallit? Uh, Yeah, Dumbing It Down with Dave is my uh, twice-weekly, 30-minute podcast that I do in my car uh, as I record it in here in the caravan, going to and from work during my commute on the New York State Thruway because it's the only time I have. I have no extra time. So I'm a truck driver, and on the way to work and on the way home from work, I do a podcast, and I talk about what's on my mind. I hit the button, which is somewhere over here. I hit the button, I record, and I hit the button, I shut it off, and I publish it. And that's the end of that. 234 episodes in. Not bad for four years of podcasting no. for, for a dummy like me. And I have to say, too, that I, I love your theme song. Yes. You want to sing it? You want to do a <laughs> duet? Like Kenny Rogers and Dolly Martin. Yeah. That would be funny. Yeah. I'm going for a drive. That's very good. I love it. Everybody loves it. Going for a drive. Uh, available now on anywhere? Not yet? Still? Yeah. As a matter of fact, I registered with uh, I registered it with CD Baby Pro. And now I just got an email saying that they've submitted it to like hundreds of uh, streaming services. And so really? hopefully I maybe make a few bucks from it. I don't know. Well, listen. If you can't make money on CD Baby Pro, you know, <laughs> you're not you're not trying. Because somebody listened to your podcast, wanted it to put it in rotation on his radio right. show, and right? We, and now I'm thinking I'm going to send a song to every single car dealer out there, manufacturer, Porsche and Audi and Ferrari, and and just one of them's just going to go. How much do you want for? A, I'm going for a drive because we're going to use that for our thieves. That's right. That's I never thought of that. That's absolutely correct. Chevrolet, I think, would be the best one because they're always trying to do like America. Well, your words are a little. I don't know about the words to the song. Exactly. You might have yeah, to but say, the chorus, but the melody. Yeah. Yeah, but it's just about you know driving wherever for no particular reason, you just getting right. in the car and taking the 101 to the 405 and beyond and wherever it le- the road leads you. Can I, I make a suggestion? Out. Can I make a suggestion? Yeah. I think you should just try, just try to change the lyrics a little bit. So just, just, you know, just that version, the commercial version of it. And then, cause yeah, that last part is I'm going for a drive. That's beautiful. But this way, you know, you can start a commercial with it and then you can end the commercial with it that, or whatever. Yeah. I love it. You're right. You should be, you should, have, that's the perfect song. You well, know, the whole last verse would fit. Go on, yeah, uh, right. Keep on going from town to town. Perhaps one day I'll settle down, but until then, you won't see me around. Going to let nice. the wind blow back my hair. Destination, I don't care. 
from now on, I won't be working nine to five. Yeah, I'm going for a drive. Wow. Wow. Harley Davidson might like that, too. I see those as two big contenders. Because Chevrolet is like, remember back in the day, apple, uh, baseball, hot dogs, apple pie, Chevrolet. They like that whole Americana thing and, you know, being free on the open road. So, Hal, I hope it works out for you. I hope it works. I just would like a little bit, a little bit, a small percentage of the profits. Just a small, because, you know, I was there when you needed More cowbell. More cowbell. No, good. Good for you, man. You're right. I never thought about that. I can't believe that. But I love I love playing it at the end of my show. I play it at the end of the show also. So I love that. It's a, way, it's a great way to end it. It's very happy. Right? It's a cheerful ending yeah. pretty much. Yeah. So, so now, and you, you, were, you were, I'm going to change the subject. We're going to talk a little bit about your background. You uh, came up a little bit in stand-up comedy? Uh, a little bit, yeah. I mean, uh, I've had uh, two different stories of stand-up. Uh, I was dared to do it. I think it was like 17 or 18 years old down in Brooklyn, New York. And I went to a, a, a no longer existing uh, comedy, nothing exists anymore, but a comedy club in Sheepshead Bay, Brooklyn called uh, Pips, P-I-P-S, Pips. Pips. It was right there in Sheepshead Bay. And Dice Clay started there and Joan Rivers worked there. Don Rickles, Jackie Mason. You know, it was, uh, it was, uh, it was the, really like the only comedy club in Brooklyn at the time, I think. It's the only one I ever performed at back in the day. Like this is, you know... Um, I'm 56, so, you know, like almost 40 years ago. Um, so, uh, I did that a couple of times, but it wasn't like a passion of mine. I love comedy. Who doesn't like to laugh? You know, everybody loves comedy, you know, but, to go on stage and do it. That's a whole nother story. Yeah. And then, uh, I took like a, a 20 or 30 year break cause, uh, I fell in love and I was a dedicated husband and provider. And then, um, I forget how many years ago it was. 10, 11 years ago, you know, so much had, time had gone by. I had not done stand-up uh, more than a couple of times in, in New York City. You know, open mics, just mics. And then right. uh, I, there was a guy who had a class up in Albany, one of those learning center deals. I said, you know, it was affordable, whatever it was. I don't remember, 30, 40, 50 bucks. So I plunked my name down. I signed up. A couple of classes later, I'm performing on stage at a bar in Albany. And uh, I had the bug again. And then I did it for about three years, like consistently, like really hard. I did it. And, uh, you know, at a price, definitely at a price because it's hard to do stand up oh, yeah. and to, you know, and, and to be driving a truck because I'm a truck driver and to be a dad, to be a soccer coach, to be a Cub Scout leader, you know, to be a, a husband, to be a, a, a son, to be a brother, to be a neighbor. Oof. I don't remember. I, was, and I listen to your podcast a lot. I don't know. If I remember you talking about your kid and being a soccer dad and all. Oh, yeah. It was a long time ago, though. I mean, he's yeah. 23 now. So that was, just, you know. How many kids you got? Ago. Just the one? One son. Yeah, it's enough. It's enough. <laughs> just the one. Yeah, I got one pain in the butt. <laughs> I got one. Yeah. If I hit this button, you'll see his Mustang that he's been crying about on the other side of this camera. He finally afforded after God knows how long. So congratulations to him and his expensive Mustang. His 93 octane <laughs> fuel burning. Mustang, have fun with that in the winter. Yeah, my roommate has a Mustang. They, there you go. Those, those things are they're cool cars, though. They're cool cars. What I'm year sorry. is his? I don't know, like a you know late nineties, early two thousands. I think I forget now. Yeah. It's gonna take me for a ride later. Actually, we're gonna go for a drive. <laughs> go for a drive. I haven't driven it yet. It's a two door, and it's a, probably a three or four five speed. I don't even know. But uh, it's I know when he's leaving the house, and I know when he's coming home because I can hear it. I can hear it through the window. When I'm sleeping. Yeah. Right. Nice. Nice way to wake up dad. Yeah. Because I sleep during the day. So it's really nice to be woken up in the middle of the day before I go drive a truck. Right. With his so loud now, Mustang. Truck drivers are road warriors every bit as much as musicians are, if not more. As a matter right. of fact, I think truck, truck drivers are, to me, angels of the highway. They're the wow. ones who will, will save your life. When I, when I, I don't know if I told you this. When I moved out to California originally, I mean, I'm back now in Philadelphia, but years ago when I moved out to Cal California, it was in, in the middle of a blizzard. And uh, when I got, I think it was Arizona, it was like black ice all across the state. And oh, wow. Traffic had come to a, a dead crawl all across Arizona. Just, just before I got into L.A. where the weather was 80 degrees. But in, in Arizona, it was whatever, 20 degrees. And there was a sheet of black ice. So traffic was crawling. And I started to drift off, like falling asleep at the wheel. And there was a truck driver behind me. And every time he, like he was 
keeping an eye on me. Kept like honking the horn, give me a little beep beep, you know, just to keep me on my toes. Wow. And then another truck. This before that happened, when I was go- I was going through the Smoky Mountains, and it was the fog was so dense. It must have been midnight with the densest fog I had ever seen. I couldn't see anything. And um, I opened my door. I was look- looking down at the street so I could barely even see the street below the car. That's how thick right. the fog was. And then I saw in my rearview mirror these headlights coming up really fast behind me. And I'm like, uh-oh, I'm going to die. I thought this whoever was behind me was just going to plow right into me. But it turned out to be a truck. And I guess he just knew the road so well because... I don't know how he did it, but he was just navigating that road like it was no problem. So I mm. floored it, and I was tail tailed the truck till we got out of that fog. Wow! So, so I think very highly of truck drivers. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. We don't have You're the uh, true road warriors. Thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate that. You know, it's, uh, we don't always have the greatest reputation because some of our examples that stick out stick out for the wrong reason. But I think the majority of us are good people and um, do the best we can. And now I'm an essential worker on top of that. So it's really been a lot of fun. <laughs> I, nothing's changed in my life, but I know people say that. You know. So what kind of stuff have you hauled in, in, as a truck driver? Is it always the same thing or do you? I've done two things. I've done groceries and uh, now it's ma- mostly milk. I just do milk. You know, big time milk. I deliver milk to Starbucks you know, the distribution centers and 7-Eleven, things like that, and other dairies that uh, that buy our milk. So uh, it's just basically trailers of milk. I make one, you know, you know, um, a thousand cases at a time. So and when you're it. watching TV and on the screen it says, got milk, you must think to yourself, oh, yeah, I got plenty of that. I got plenty of milk, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, they stopped running those a long time ago, and unfortunately the milk industry is taking a hit because, you know, everybody's going to the fake milk and they're going to Red Bull. You know, everybody's doing... Drinking everything else, uh, you know, the last generation or so, last 10, 20 years has taken a hit. So the almond uh, milk and the soy milk. All of that stuff, all of that stuff. Yeah, so things have changed. You know, the tastes have changed. Uh, the milk industry had that, got milk thing, and then they let it go. And then the fake milk came, and then the kids came with their energy drinks. Then the energy drinks, you know, if you're a kid, what do you want to drink, milk or monster? You know, <laughs> monster. You know, what do you want to drink? You want to drink milk? You want to drink Red Bull? And Red Bull's everywhere. Red Bull soccer, Red Bull racing, Red Bull parachuting, Red Bull, Red Bull, Red Bull. You know, it's like, so their marketing has really been fantastic. And uh, they've just taken us down uh, a whole bunch of notches. And plus the whole hormone thing, all of that stuff. It's just bad publicity. So they lost a lot of the market. They let go. And, they, and uh, Saturday morning cartoons don't exist anymore. So right. kids don't sit there watching Hong Kong Fui eating Cheerios and Frosted Flakes with their milk. You know, they're getting up. I don't know what they're, they're playing. They're playing uh, whatever. Right. They're, Saturday they're, pour, they're pouring Red Bull into the Rice Krispies now. They, prob- they <laughs> probably are. Well, they're if it's any doing. consolation, Dave, I yes. am still, to this day, a milk guy. Oh, I, I grew up with chocolate milk. I had to have syrup in it, lots mm. of it, nice yeah. and chocolatey. But I, yeah. I, I always like chocolate milk. There you go. I love chocolate. Who doesn't love chocolate milk? Like, Although now coffee, it has... Yeah. yeah, in my coffee, just real half and half. No, None of that dairy cream, fake dairy cream. It has to be uh, a dairy product. The real, yeah. real deal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I like chocolate milk, although I learned uh, I learned a valuable lesson. One glass is good enough, especially when I'm out there driving, because uh-huh. more than one glass, Dave, Dave doesn't respond very well to chocolate milk anymore. <laughs> so, But it puts a smile on my face. It always does, right? Yeah. Like, oh, it's so special. The chalk and the good chalk, good syrup. You know, like, you know, what's your favorite syrup? You have a favorite syrup? Does it matter? Uh, when I was a kid, it was Bosco. <laughs> Bosco. But go. now, just, just go to Hershey's. Hershey's is my go-to. Go to. Bosco's hard to find. It's very hard to find. It's amazing yeah. they're still in business. But, uh, yeah, Bosco, I remember Bosco. I did find some a while back, and I tried it, and I'm like, it, what, it tasted like I remembered it. But I guess I had, by that time, just gotten a Found Hershey's tasted better to me now. Now that I'm yeah. an adult. Yeah. How about Fox's? You bet. Did you have Fox's? You bet where you were? Not to my knowledge. No. Yeah. Fox's. Fox's uh, was a syrup that you would get from the Seltzer Seltzer Man. We had, you know, we would get, we would get Seltzer delivery in Brooklyn. I don't know about the rest of the world. I always think Seltzer is like very specific to Brooklyn right. and Jews. You know, <laughs> my family. You know, but uh, we would have a Seltzer guy come with this big wooden case, all these bottles of Seltzer. And he goes, hey, you want any syrup with it? 
you get strawberry syrup or vanilla cream, or you get uh, all these. They, they had all these flavors, and it was Fox's. Fox's, you bet. And you look it up. It's and they still exist. I think delicious chocolate syrup, and you make an egg cream. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. You I make remember egg, cream. egg creams. Yeah, you make an, yeah, egg creams, which has nothing to do with eggs, as far as I know. I have no idea. No, it's it has everything to do syrup. with baby boomers, though, because nobody eats egg creams anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right, right. So I don't know why they call it an egg. It's cream. not even egg and egg cream. It's like what is it, like so soda and seltzer, milk and syrup. That's, that's it. it. <laughs> and they call it an egg cream. How did that Where's happen? The egg. Where's the I egg? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm going to look it up now that we talked about it. I'm going to look it up, and I'll probably be episode two thirty five. All right. Uh, <laughs> so we we inspired Dave Canyon's next dumbing it down with. Egg cream because yeah. nothing is dumber than calling something an egg cream and there's no egg or cream in it. By the way, and you just created a segment. Nothing is dumber, and then dot dot dot. And I'll do a segment called "Nothing is Dumber." There you go. Wow. All right. Thank you. You're yeah. welcome. On one hand, on one hand, you're a hero. On the other hand, thanks. You just created more work for me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now so, I have to do research. So moving on. So now, yeah. since this is called Tales of the Road Warriors, and yes. I, that I said several times now that you, being a truck driver, are a yes. true road warrior. Right. I need a tale from you. Oh. Uh, just think about some something uh, entertaining and uh, exciting. It doesn't have to be that exciting. From the road. A good yeah. From, a good, from good my seat in the road. In the truck. Oh my God! You know, incident you're at not a truck stop it. or a, a, I don't know something crazy happened on the job. That you well, don't get fired yeah. for talking about. Can I tell you something? I know you're going to hate this. And even if you had given me a week to prepare. Uh, I've been driving a tractor trailer. I've driven cabs. I've driven limos. Well, I, I do have a good stretch limo story. Does that count? Sure. <laughs> but um, yeah. Was I, it on well, the road? Yeah. Yes. Yes, okay, it was on the road. Okay, I didn't say yes. it had to ha yeah. be in a yeah. truck. Yeah, just, yeah, because... You're a road warrior no matter what you're driving. My tr my truck driving experience has been pretty mundane. Like, I never see, I'm always looking like, oh, are they naked? No. <laughs> yeah. Is she naked? No. You know, like, there's no, nobody's ever naked. You know, I always hear these stories about people being naked and women doing the flashing. I go, I never get this. I never get those, those stories. But, uh, no, I mean, I drove a, a stretch limo back in the day, and I drove some celebrities. I have a lot of celebrities that I drove for. Um, Peter Graves. I drove Peter Graves. Nice guy. Um, Dick Cavett, Dennis Hines, Gregory Hines. Dennis was his brother, or right. Dennis was a football player from high school. I can't remember. But Gregory Hines, I drove a lot of celebrities. Yeah, Gregory Hines was people. the hoofer. Yeah, the hoof, right. Uh, so I drove a lot of celebrities. Um, but I also drove just a lot of people that just wanted to get to the airport. And uh, one day I was driving a, a husband and a wife, or I, I cannot confirm nor deny, actually. There was a man and there was a woman, all right? And, uh -huh. you know, there was a there was a man and there was a woman. So anyway, so we're driving and I'm driving them to Kennedy Airport. And um, it used to be really easy to drive around Kennedy Airport. It was like, you know, all the terminals you can hit. It was just a really easy drive around. Uh, in short, you know, Kennedy Airport got really complicated, but it used to be very easy. So we got there really early. And um, I was like, OK, you know, it's time to get out and pop the trunk and blah, blah, blah. So the guy says, hey, our driver. I said, yeah, he goes, uh, can you just keep on driving around? I went, sure. And then all of a sudden, the divider went, you know, <laughs> they solid think, black. Uh, what? They wanted to wish each other a goodbye, kind of a little. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, there's the Mile High Club. This was, you know, a blacktop club. This is <laughs> circling around there's Kennedy before Club. before we leave the ground club. Yeah, 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 right. So, um Right, before we leave the ground club. So, uh, yeah, I just drove around and around and around. I was like, well, <laughs> how long is this going to take? I don't remember how many laps I did, but I, it would be funny if I knew how many laps I did. It was a while. Somebody was lasting a long time. <laughs> Somebody was doing okay. And this is <laughs> way before any enhancement pills and all this other stuff. And then um, and then eventually the thing went down. <laughs> You know, yeah. you know, all right, we're ready. Like, okay. Now, I, but I didn't want to look back. Like, are you guys okay? Like, I didn't say nothing. I was like, yeah, of yeah. course. You know, just par for the course. And then um, I dropped them off. So that's really like the most 
you know. So who got the better tip, her or you? <laughs> <laughs> well, he dropped her off, and then um, uh, he dropped her off, and then uh, he got back in the car, and uh, you know, I took him to a strip club or something like that. No, I know, no, there was, I don't know, I don't remember what tip I got, but he was just a guy, just a everyday average guy, and I don't know. I never saw him again. So um, some people you see again, but I never saw him again. I did a lot of expense accounts, executives and things like that. So, you know, um, I, you want to hear a cab story? I'll give you a cab story. Sure. You, you, a I, you drove a cab too? I, I drove everything. Yeah. I drove a, a submarine. I drove a cab. I drove stretch limos, trucks. You know, I've delivered, you know, candy and cigarettes and I've been, uh, I've been hijacked. I've been truck jacked. You know, I've had what? people, yeah, those experiences. Well, no, what? Here's the story. How'd you forget about that? No, I didn't forget. I just, you know, it's just all coming back. Listen, man, I'm 56 years old. You know, it's like it's like rebooting your computer. Sometimes it takes a while. You got to let it warm up, you know. But, uh, yeah, I used to deliver uh, candy and cigarettes, uh, you know, um, stamped cigarettes. They were stamped, which means that they're legal for sale. Uh, and somebody paid taxes on them or somebody's going to pay taxes on them. If they're not stamped, then I guess they're bootleg cigarettes or whatever. Somebody's cheating on the taxes. So um, anyway, so I was in Greenpoint, Brooklyn, I think it was. And I was with an older guy, you know, pilot, you know, uh, co-pilot. And we were both driving, delivering uh, candy and cigarettes to all these stores, bodega, all over the place. And um, one day we we pulled over uh, somewhere in yeah, Greenpoint, Brooklyn. I forget the name of the street. Anyway, we, pull, we stopped and go, oh, there it is. He gets out of his side of the car. I get my, uh, the van. I get out of my side. And we're both be- met by uh, guys <laughs> with um, with um, fingers in their shirts. <laughs> bad guys. <laughs> and the, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, I don't want to judge that they were good or bad. I just, you know, they were they had a business of their own, which was to <laughs> abscond with our business and move <laughs> on. So um, they said, don't say nothing. Just follow us. And. We walked down the street and got into a Chevy Impala, and they drove us down to uh, Sheepshead Bay in Manhattan Beach. Took us like a half an hour to get there because of the traffic. <laughs> I was, Whoa. we were jacked. We got truck jacked, and I never saw the van again. And and uh, that's it. And they took they took the guy's license, the guy I was with. They said, "Give me your license." And the guy gave him his license. He goes, "All right, now I know where you live. I know who you are. Don't say nothing to the police." He was like, "Yeah, no problem." <laughs> they didn't take my license though, because I sung like a canary. <laughs> but um, <laughs> Yeah, the guy asked me questions. Yeah, I, I saw them and I gave them descriptions and everything. So I'm so curious who these guys were, if they were like really like known, you know, mobsters or whatever like that. But uh, yeah, two guys, man, they jacked us, took well, the whole van. I'm glad you're that alive was like a to second. Tell. <laughs> that's it. That's my tale. So that's it. Uh, you know, I got, you know, I met celebrities and, you know, um, I haven't seen anything. You know, I've seen wrecks. I see, I've seen a lot of crazy things on the road, but uh, I've seen beautiful vistas. Of uh, of the Northeast, I've seen I've seen almost I see Manhattan almost every day. You know, New York City, the skyline, beautiful yeah. skyline. Have you ever I've took seen fireworks show shows on the, on your on your engine? Okay, you know it's just so funny you ask me that. I was talking to a buddy of mine. I've been in the business for so long. I have not killed anything yet like that. Um, I have seen a lot. I mean, the last couple of weeks, New York State Thruway has been horrible. We always have a period of time where the deer start to rut. They call it rutting. And yeah. uh, the deer are just out of control. But um, I killed a couple of birds like 20 some odd years ago going underneath an overpass. They, you know, they were they hang out in the steel. Yeah, no, beams I'm just talking about like when you yeah. get hungry on the road and there's roadkill <laughs> and you wrap it in like foil and put it on your oh, engine, yeah. heat it and up. Eat it? it gets like four or five hundred degrees. And I heard yeah. about people cooking, you know, food on their engine as they drive. Yeah. You ever do that? No? Yeah. No, I've never, I don't know how to, I haven't taken it that far yet. No, I just usually grab a sandwich. That's, you know, <laughs> there's <laughs> okay. a lot of truck stops. Uh, they must, I yeah. thought maybe they teach in like some kind of uh, truck driver culinary school. That's a great idea. That's a great idea. Yeah, sure. You how to I'm use sure your engine as a, as a, as a stove top. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, hood top, hood top cooking. So, um, yeah, no, I, I'm sure I know guys do it. Uh, I haven't watched the YouTube videos. I'm sure there's recipes, you know, yeah, right. uh, how'd you like you your know. omelet? What'd you like in your omelet? Yeah, I like, yeah. I like it with a little five W 30, please. You know, open the hood and start cooking. So, um, but I haven't done that yet, but, um, I know, I you know what I did. I used to put, uh, I, I carry food in, I used to carry food in the Tupperware and I would put it on my dashboard. 
and I would crank up the heat and I'd roll down the windows. I'd crank up that heat 100%, everything to the red, everything to the high, and I'd put the Tupperware on the dashboard. It would just sit on an angle, and the heat would come up, and I would cook on my dashboard. And I, would, I had to keep the windows open because it gets it got pretty hot. Right. So you do that for about an hour or two. But now I've modernized, and I just plug it into the cigarette lighter, and I have a hot plate, and it works fantastic. You know, an hour later, you got hot food, so... I've I've evolved in my cooking yeah, process. We all have. We've yeah. evolved to the point where now that we no one can leave the house, all these <laughs> tips and tricks are not useful anymore. <laughs> <laughs> not in the car. No, no. Well, you know, listen, for me, you know, I'll be I'll be doing this for a little bit longer, you know, driving. So, you know, I gotta do what I gotta do to keep the old I don't know if you can hear it, but you can't see it. My belly's down here, so oh, I gotta that keep that filled. Yes, yeah. There you go. So oh, yeah. now how let me ask you this: Since uh, we are in the midst of this uh, pandemic isolation thing, how's it treating you? How, how are you dealing with it? You're still working, so you're just probably not hitting you the same way as a lot of people. Yeah, I have not missed a day, although I've taken more days off than usual because things have been a little slow, and I've taken advantage of the fact that I can work a couple of days and I can take time off, and I have so many things to accomplish, you know, that I never have time for. So I, I haven't taken advantage of it. Uh, so financially it has not been a hit. My wife is still working as a, as a teacher, although her last day was this past Friday. So she's done for the summer. We're hoping that she gets a phone call and she gets rehired. So we all, we lost a little, a little income, but what's interesting is that bef- when, before all this happened, I was already living life in isolation. You know, I don't really get around. I don't have like people so you, dropping you hardly in. you noticed say, any you know, change whatsoever. My life hasn't changed one bit, one yeah. bit, because yeah, I, I always I was already living that life. Yeah. I was playing weekly in a hotel yeah. and once or twice a month at a supermarket. And those were like two very steady gigs, um, you know, at 1099s and everything. So when the hotel closed and the supermarket only allows you, in, you know, to get basic necessity. So there was no playing music there either. So all of a sudden I went from, you know, playing all the time to hardly ever playing anywhere, you know, private parties, forget it. I'm not going to go to some stranger's ha- house, you know, right. chance. So, yeah, uh, I was telling you earlier, I, I've been online filling out these forms, trying to get like some, uh, public, some, uh, government help. Right. So, uh, and I look at these forms and it, they just make you, uh, see double, you know, they blur your vision and give you a headache. And I get all the way to the end, filling the form out. And right. then they want the, the section where they wanted you to upload proof, like my 1099s. So I start to do that. And then it took me to some cr- screen that said, uh, we're experiencing a problem. Someone will oh. call you. After uh. like all this t- time filling all this out and typing information. And so now I'm still, as we speak, I'm still waiting for somebody to call me from the government, from PA, from Pennsylvania. And help me, you know, walk me through this and help me get a little bit of uh, financial aid. So, Oh man, good luck to you. I, those forms are killer, killer. Yeah. So hopefully, you know, maybe my point. song will take off and I'll, you know, maybe make money from my music that way and do little concerts online. Some of my friends are doing that, but I don't know how well they're doing. Yeah. But, you know, I made a few virtual tips here and there, but like not enough to like pay my rent and bills. Right. So, like, and, and playing on a street corner with a hat, not your deal. Uh, no, because nobody's walking by. There's nobody outside to really? throw money into the hat. Wow, is that? I, I mean, I what street corner would this be where I could make some money with a hat? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, listen, you know, test it out and see what. Ha- maybe, maybe people will come out for you. I, I got, I got the hat right here. Sounds that's a nice hat. I wouldn't use that one. Use a use a dirty one. There you go. Yeah, who doesn't want to? <laughs> Here, Carlos Santana play the guitar. Go on. Really? <laughs> Carlos Santana thing happening. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, maybe they'll throw money from the porches and from the terraces, you know? You could send a, a, a monkey out there to collect it. I think that was a well, cartoon I'll tell back you what in the I will do, though. I will put my PayPal and my Venmo below in the show notes of this, you know, on the YouTube right. and on, on the show notes of my website. So if anybody does want to, you know, help out, uh, there'll be a link uh, where you can do that. And... Uh, there you go. You know, Send them money. That's my shameless self-promotional plug there, Dave. Sorry. I had Why to not? No, that's fine. It's your show, man. But, um, yeah, I mean, I guess uh, 
was that something you have ever done? Have you ever just put out the hat and play the guitar and with a little? I, PA? I did a couple of times. Didn't make a lot. See if it, the the guys who do that for a living, like all the time, they're they're sort of like situated and they're, they're, people know them. Uh, right. So, so you got to get a permit to do it in, in like the subway uh, station, right? In Philadelphia downtown, and a lot of those guys they have their territory all marked out, like they've been doing it. So I tried it once or twice, but you really can't compete with those guys that have been doing it all the time. That's that's their gig. Yeah. And to be honest with you, I prefer the private parties and the hotels and restaurants anyway. It's a little bit, you know, more more. Um, well, it's better money and a little more prestigious. Right. You, know, you don't look like you're begging when you're in a restaurant or a hotel. I hear you. I hear you. When I was a young uh, young boy uh, about forty years ago. In New York City, there was Washington Square Park. It's a very famous park in New York, in the village, Washington Square Park. And there was a comedian. His name was Charlie Barnett. Charlie Barnett, who has an incredible story because apparently he auditioned for Saturday Saturday Night Live just about the same time Eddie Murphy did. But one problem, Charlie Barnett was illiterate. He was illiterate, but he was a very funny comedian. And um, anyway... He was in uh, DC Cab or something like that back in the day. He has a small role in a movie called DC Cab. I can't anyway, remember so, the name Charlie Barnett. The Charlie rings Barnett. Bell. I'll yeah. look him up. So he would, yeah, absolutely. It's a good story. And he would be at Washington Square Park. And, you know, I, I don't know if he had a schedule. Probably not. But I'd be there with my buddies, you know, dabbling in, you know, things that are smoked in rolling paper and uh, drinking Forster's Lager beer and whatever before we go see the midnight show of The Song Remains the Same at a local theater, you know, the Led Zeppelin movie. And um, Charlie would just start yelling out, it's showtime, it's showtime. And he'd be running around with his hat and he'd be running around the park and people would gather, people would gather. And before you know it, man, he had an audience of like 50, 100 people and he would just perform out in this park and yeah. do stand up in front of all these people. And he was a killer. He was a great, funny face, elastic face. You know, he had these white, these big white nails and very, right. very animated, very, very funny. And he, and he had some some bodyguards with him, too. And um, he had some uh, he had his hat. And, you know, I don't know how much money he made, but, uh, you know, he had some drug issues. So eventually he passed away. But you can do yeah. well busking. I have a yeah. cousin, uh, yeah. Sarah, Sarah Lightman. She just put a CD out, but she went out to L.A. And she just started busking in the Santa Monica in, in the uh, the outdoor, you know, uh, plaza there. Right. And one thing led to another, and she got invited to to do it up in Universal City Walk, which is a great gig. Right. And they projected her image onto the big uh, the big tr- uh, something Tron, you know, the Megatron screen. So wow, uh, that's cool. So yeah, you know you can do well busking, but like I said, you have to establish yourself. You got to commit to that, and that's a hard life in the beginning. Yeah, yeah, and it starts it starts with one song, Hal. You got like how many songs? You got a lot of songs. You got some. Really nah, good songs. Really. I, got, I have maybe thirty, but only the one song that do I have out there actually trying like trying to do something with it. Yeah, but how long would you? If, if and that's you not even my best you, song. Which one? The one that I like. I'm going for a going drive. For a drive. By far from my best song, so I have to I have to get my other ones out there. What's your best song? Because you sent me a whole bunch. Uh, the one the I get. The earthquake one? No, that, 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 that was just for fun. That was just kind of cheer my friends up. No, I must have had a great time last night is the one I think I get the most uh, yeah. requests for. Yeah, I think I've heard it. i got to hear it again because my memories. I'm so transfixed on the uh, going for a drive well, song. I perform it uh, live, I split the room into three parts and I get everybody singing along with it. And th- you sing this and you guys sing that and you guys sing that. And it all comes together, and it's uh, it's kind of cool the way it works. It's hard to yeah, explain. Well, you have to you have to be no, there. Uh, is it kind of like row 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 your boat like that a little bit? Kind like yeah, kind of like that. But okay. it's more like a, right. so like p- the police. You know, like and uh, the police were like, "Don't stand, don't stand so, don't stand so close to me." Okay, so right. it's sort of like that. And then in, in my case, it's like I must have had a great time last night. I must have had a great time last night, all right. And the other guys are going, must have had a great, I must have had a great, I must have had a great time last night. I wow. Have, so, and then another, the third part's going, a great time last night, all right. And so all three parts come together. And if you got enough people singing their part, it sounds very, very cool. 
you know, wow. against the cords in the background. Uh, see, if you had a crowd, you could do this outside. But I know if nobody's outside, and, and that does take a lot to set up the, you know, your, your little amp. You got to carry it. Or you got to find a corner or a spot underneath a tree. And, you know, but I see in New York City, it's, it's so common to see this in New York City that I just, I just figured you could just do it anywhere. But you know, I know there's permits and it gets New York City also has that subway thing where you could get a spot on the subway. Yeah. But, you know, trains are coming and going. And you really want to be down in that subway? You know, I don't know. But uh, that's what people, you know, people play the violin and they, all these different things. But you play more than one instrument, don't you? Yeah, I play uh, keyboards and some bass and I can't play the drums, but I can program the, the right. electronic ones. How about so harmonica? Recording, I could yeah. do that. Yeah. How about harmonica? Yes. I play harmonica. Yeah, I've always wanted to play that. Can you do it really good? Can you do it like, you know, yeah. anything special? Yeah. That was my very first instrument. So I, I just took right to it like a fish to water. Shouldn't it be every child's first instrument other than the kazoo? The harmonica. It's like this big. How, you know, you, how hard is it for kids, you know, to, at a certain age to learn and master the harmonica? Shouldn't that be in the school systems all across this country? I think in the school systems, they teach you the xylophone and the, the little penny whistle, you know, those little metal flutes. The recorder. The recorder. The recorder. Yeah. yeah. Hot cross buns, hot cross buns, hot, 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 cross buns. That's it. Yeah, no, That's nobody ever got. taught the harmonica in school, though. You Why not? Enough, right? Yeah. 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 This big. Kids, you know, well, probably big, lose them, but, yeah. but now they're very expensive. Even the, the cheapest ones are like 20 bucks a piece. You know, harmonica used to cost like two, two bucks. What happened? I don't know. <laughs> they caught on somehow. To, what is it? Uh, supply and demand took over. Okay. So what happened? More demand, lower supply? Which one? Uh, I don't know. More greed. Yeah, oh, we can greed. make more money if we charge more for these things. Everybody wants one. You know, I'm glad we're having this conversation because it's reminding me that I want to put that on my list of things to do before I go. You know, to learn at least one song in the harmonica. I do fake harmonica, like, wah, 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 you know. Yeah, I, I, knew, that. I knew that too. Yeah, I, you know, so, but uh, sometimes, I, sometimes I pull it off. Most times I don't. But it, it seems like a, a natural, like, how hard can that be? It's, anyway. not, it's not. Well, it, there, are, there are some things you got to know because... Um, yeah. Well, I don't want to describe how to right. play a harmonica. Right. There, there's a lot more to it, though, than just blowing in and out. Oh, sure. There, sure. there are I'm, techniques, and yeah. you'll notice some guys are better than others. If you oh, absolutely. Some old harp players, you know, some guys go, whoa, how the hell does he do that? The way they, yeah. they can bend those notes and, you know. Wow. Yeah, I, I like so, the big ones. When the guys come out with the big ones, that's pretty amazing. That's a lot of holes in there, and there's a lot of breathing, a lot of inhaling and exhaling, which is amazing. Yeah. All right, go Breathing so is anyway. So yeah. anyway, talk, talk about your show a little bit before I go. It's getting getting the hour's getting late. <laughs> it's it's, uh, dumbing it down with Dave. Well, dumbing it down with Dave is still going. You know, I'm going to do an episode tonight. You know, episode two thirty five. You know, uh, I'm not exactly what show what it's going to be about. It could be about something really dumb. It could be. It's always you know my show is always based on pragmatism, truth, happiness, and the search for it all. Because that's me. That's that's just my natural thing. I'm always looking for the core, you know, whether we're talking about racism, whether we're talking about politics, whether we're talking about whatever we're talking about. I always feel like it's never what you see on the surface. It's never what you see on the surface. It's never what you hear. It's always something way deeper than that. And I, I like, you know, I'm like that kid that keeps on asking why, why? They why? like to answer. read between the lines. Between the and, lines, yeah. And and by the way, you also uh, deem yourself the fastest podcast on earth currently, yeah. Because you podcast while you're driving to work at right like five miles an hour, seventy. Can um, I confirm I nor deny the speeds? Though, because you know the president wants to have the space force, and yes. as time goes by, if if that space travel becomes a thing, and somebody decides to start a podcast in space on the way to work to the space station. Right. You're going to have competition as, as far as who's got the fastest. After that. I might have the second fastest podcast. On, well, I'll always be the fastest podcast on Earth, but maybe right. the second fa- fa- you know, in the universe. It all depends. But listen, I'll be number two in the universe, and I'll be number three in the whatever, in the in the realms, if there's different you No, know, I might not be the fastest one in, in all the realms. So, oh, you're um, the fastest we'll one see. for now. That's all that counts. We're, 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 this is in the here and now. 
There Dave you go. Cannon, fastest podcaster on earth. There you go. Yeah. And, uh, you know, listen, I, I, I create subtitles. That's one of the things I'm good at. You know, I got a title and I got two other subtitles. But, uh, but you know, people get nervous when I say fastest podcast on earth. And they don't like me doing the podcast in the car while I'm driving because they think it's dangerous. All but right. this is it. This is, the, this is the vehicle. I got two hands on the wheel. And I'm going forward and I'm talking. And, uh, you know, I got the earbuds and I just do my show. And it's great because I'm, I'm a one-man guy and I don't rely on anybody. Nobody is connected to me. I just do what I do. And it's great. It's a great way to get the voice out there. It's a great way to, to be creative and not you have know, to pay an AM radio station or something like that, you know? Yeah. yeah. I just had a thought yeah. that while you were talking, I'm looking at the, the background and I might have to go with, I have the dirtiest podcast. I don't even use foul language, but I'm no. looking at the, the scene behind me. Right. If I unblur it, you'll see I have the dirtiest podcast on earth. Well, how about, how about messiest? Is messiest a little bit the messiest? Less yeah, it's a messy messiest. podcast. <laughs> yeah, by the way, there's a there's a podcast platform called Messy FM or something like that. So oh, yeah. uh, I think I'm I'm on that. It's one of my 29 or 30 platforms. Which, by the way, you can find Dumbing It Down with Dave almost anywhere. There's podcasting, except Pandora. Ah, oh! yeah, they're the only ones that sit on me for some reason. Yeah. yeah. The same with Tales of the Road Warriors. I'm on all the platforms. So yeah. you can find Tales of the Road Warriors or Dumbing It Down with Dave almost anywhere podcasts are found. So check them both out, you guys. And Dave, thanks a lot, man. I had a good time. Talk to you. Time to, it's time to go for a drive. All right. I put it in, I would put the vehicle in gear, but I would hit a car. <laughs> We're going for a drive. Yeah.